I am telling Zidane that he must do a two-minute trick. What do you think? जितनी तुझमें गर्मी उससे ज्यादा गर्म मेरा कलम क्यों इतना बेशरम का काम का वो काम जिसमें तेरा कल नहीं क्या काम का वो आज जिसमें तू सफल नहीं पल नहीं दिमाग की जरूरत तेरे भाई की हुकूमत सच्चाई की है सूरत चाय की है लहर हर मोहल्ले में कैर मेक सम नॉइस सिक मैन मेक सम नॉइस फॉर माय ब्रदर थैंक यू सिक हाउ आर यू व्हेन यू आर 25 योर होल एक्सपीरियंस ऑफ लाइफ एवरी सेल इन द बॉडी uh literally orgasmic what's your take on casual relationships hook up means one way or the other you're trapped how do you deal with uh breakups you are talking of hook up now you're talking breakup sir yahi problem hai namaskaram vidan namaskar uh Rishi, as you know, uh, this chair he... was not made for me. <laughs> <laughs> so, Guru Ji, uh, as you know, ki uh, jo aaj ka theme hai, uh, youth and truth hai. So, my uh, first question is. Uh, don't talk all Hindi, man. We are South Indian. <laughs> <Indian. laughs> <laughs> so, sir, I want to ask you how uh, important. is it to be truthful in life and uh, always you know one always speaks the truth to one's self and to people around say uh, if every day uh, you are with new set of people you can tell whatever lies you want to tell but if you want same people to be around you build a community build strong relationships with people if you are not truthful nobody will stick to you So do you want to have profound relationships in life or do you want to have just flaky flaky hi hi bye bye kind of stuff it depends on that mm. but if you are not truthful one thing is <coughs> people will fall off another thing is to tell one lie just just try right now try to say something which is not true to me you will see it will need anywhere between 10 to 100 thoughts to generate one lie to tell truth if i don't remember i'll ask hey what was that no burden on me people ask me sadguru how is this you know probably most people here do not know the number of projects across the world we are running how do you run all this is it not burdensome is it not stressful because we are 7 days of the week 365 days this is my 40th year of <laughs> being active like this so <laughs> but i am under 25 huh? <laughs> so <laughs> so how do you do this this is because my head is empty i don't have to say anything other than what's true so you don't have to overwork to generate a lie you have to overwork especially when you want to lie to yourself you have to do too much work and when you want to lie to other people lot more work if you have to lie to 10 different people many many fold it gets compounded so being truthful is stress free and people will be with you so speaking from my own experience sir, i was uh uh i was i think 21 uh i was lying to a lot of people mostly my relatives that uh, i'm doing chartered accountancy <laughs> and that was quite stressful uh, uh, because no, i really wanted to be an actor that profession it's okay <laughs> i'm lying <laughs> you should have said that i'm going to be a lawyer <laughs> so so that lie kind of sheltered my belief because if i went on speaking the truth to uh, everybody like my friends and relatives that you know i want to be an actor i was like how is that possible you're like from a you know middle class family it's it's very difficult for you so people start demotivating you to protect myself i started lying except my parents they they, they knew i want to be an actor uh uh but other than that i was lying and it i think it kind of has worked for me uh till now so so what's your perspective on that uh that's a camouflage uh, okay <laughs> <laughs> that's a camouflage uh in some situations to survive maybe you will have to wear a camouflage but if you told them you're an actor and when they started all kinds of their own advices it was there was a whole lot of opportunity for you to act yeah you could have practiced on them instead practicing. of that you 
Yeah. Acted like you're counting numbers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's uh, so, uh, sir, when you were twenty-five… Hey, don't share me, I'm not a boss of something <laughs> So, when you were twenty-five, uh, what were the uh, challenges that you faced? Uh, you know, were you like as confused as uh, like how I was or I think a lot of people at that age are like, you know, figuring out because there's so many options, there's so many professions. Back then it was doctor, engineer, lawyer, chartered accountant, but now there are so many things, you know, uh, influencers, bloggers. So, uh, what was, how are you when you were 25? Did you know that <laughs> the purpose of life? <laughs> well, uh... When you're twenty-five, why any damn thing is a challenge, I don't understand. Hello? When you become eighty-five, it's a challenge. To get up from your bed, it could be a challenge. Twenty-five, what is a challenge? I did not know what's a challenge. And uh, I did not want to… wanted to become any of those things that you said, doctor, engineer, accountant, this one, that one. I did not want to become any of those things. So I had no concerns. So, uh, you know, my, my father being a very, uh, very academically, very competent and uh, being a physician, he always worried, you're not educating yourself for anything in particular, what will you do? I said, see, if I educate myself for something particular, I'll have to do that particular thing. If I don't educate myself for anything particular, I can do whatever I wish. And that's how I'm living even today, doing whatever is needed around me, I just do it. You don't need qualifications, you just have to have a learning mind that you don't stop looking at things with wonder, you don't stop looking at things with the necessary attention. The big problem with education is, Right from kindergarten, they gave you marks, they gave you rewards for your memory. Nobody gave you any reward for your attention, hello? But now uh, you have a smart friend in your pocket, that guy has more memory than you. Yeah. Machines have much, much more memory than you. Now what are you going to do? You thought you had this much memory and you were great. See. People read five books and they become professors. Somebody reads one book and they become agents of God. <laughs> so, now your phone can read all the scriptures on the planet, all right? So what do you do? It represents all the gods that you can imagine. It just knows everything that you do not know. Chat GPT. So yeah. I'm saying the once you... And the chat GPT is even writing poetry on me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, because uh, this is very important. Uh, in terms of what we do in our life, memory will allow you to survive. It made you look smart in a classroom. But out… outside in the world, you may be nothing. In a classroom, you look smart because you remember the damn textbook. I never read it, so I did not remember it. Because human attention is the most valuable thing. Human attention is capable of opening up any door in the universe. But your attention has to be keen enough. I must tell you an example. You definitely have heard of Andrew Carnegie. When Carnegie in thirties, in the twentieth century, he was making a lot of money. When I say lot of money, not like today's uh, Zuckerbergers and Musks, everybody talks in hundreds of billions of dollars, not that kind of money, but for those days, much more money that anybody else was making. So the U.S. government became a little suspicious that, how can somebody make so much money in a short while? He must be doing something wrong. So they set up a, a group of congressmen to investigate this. So after investigating, they didn't find anything wrong, so they questioned him. How are you making so much money? He said, 
I can keep my mind focused on something up to five minutes. Can any of you do it? I said, what's the big deal, five minutes? So he set up a test for them. Most people who are congressmen, elected representatives, they couldn't keep their mind focused on something for ten seconds. He said, you should not be running United States. <laughs> I'm telling you, this is what it is. Whether tomorrow you take up a job or you start a business or whichever way you want to conduct your life, I don't think everybody has to do those things. But the important thing is, you as a life should become full-fledged. That is the most important thing. Because this is all the aspiration of every life. A mango tree wants to be a full-fledged mango tree, an ant wants to be a full-fledged ant, an elephant wants to be a full-fledged elephant. An ant is not trying to be an elephant, mango tree is not trying to be a coconut tree, but they want to be full-fledged. Every life, every moment of their life, they're full-on, wanting to become full. That longing is there in us also, but we have a little problem, because for every other life nature has put two lines. So we know what is the top line, but with a human being there is a bottom line but there is no top line. So this is the confusion of the human being. Whatever you do, it feels like you have not done enough and that's great. So if this has to happen, what is needed is a very keen sense of attention, not memory. Memory will make you smart only in a classroom. If somebody has little more memory, you feel dumb. But attention opens doors. Attention is needed. But today people are carrying attention deficiency like a medal on their shoulders, which is a <laughs> very sad thing. I want all of you youth to do this one thing, that you must do some process, we can help you if you want, that you must learn to pay attention to something, whatever it is. It doesn't matter what you pay attention to. If you pay enough attention to something, life becomes profound. Sir, from Hello. that… Uh, uh, picking from that, sir, uh, uh, what's your take on uh, relationships? Like, a um, lot of people uh, today are finding it difficult to be in a, you know, long-term relationships. Uh, the hookup culture or the casual uh, uh, culture is kind of, you know, on the increase where, uh, you know, uh, the focus is more on their careers but not on their partners and yeah, it's… how, how do you deal… what's your take on casual relationships? See, uh, first of all, the word relationship, first of all, don't consider, uh, you know, condense it to just one point that only if it's body-based relationship, it's a relationship. Well, you can have relationship with just anybody. Hello? Don't you have a relationship with your parents, siblings, friends, neighbors? Different types of relationships to fulfill different aspects of life, all right? Now, uh, maybe when you're under twenty-five, relationship means only one thing. Well, what's that guy saying? <laughs> So, if you're talking about body-based relationship, well, you must understand, uh, when you say hook, it is talking about somebody is hooked means somebody is trapped, isn't it? Hook up means one way or the other you're trapped. So whether you want your relationship be, to be a trap or you are setting the trap for somebody else or they are setting the trap for you, both ways it's ugly for human beings to live like that. It's a trap. Hook means a trap, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. I must tell you, can I tell you a joke about hook, what hook can do? <laughs> yeah. This happened. This happened in Ireland. And one day a pirate entered the bar. He was a classic pirate, one wooden leg, eye patch, and uh, he walked in. And one hand was gone, he had a hook. Instead of a hand, he had a hook. So, uh, the barman served the drink respectfully because he's a pirate, you know. 
generally criminals are more respected than any... anybody else in the world <laughs> because they demand that. And uh, he said, Jack, what... what happened to your leg last time you were fine? Ah, uh, nothing, I was just uh, in a fight with Her Majesty's army and uh, they chopped off my leg, but no problem. My ship carpenter fixed up, I can fight, I can dance, no problem, I have a wooden leg. Then after some time serving the second drink, the barman asked, but uh, what happened to your hand? Ah, we were fighting with the Dutch and the idiots don't know how to handle a sword. Instead of hitting my sword, he hit my hand and uh, no problem. My blacksmith fixed up a hook, it works quite well, better than the hand. Because after all I have to fight, hook works better than the hand. Right. Then after serving the next drink, he asked, but what happened to your eye? Oh, that a bird poo... you know, I was looking for the stars early morning and a bird pooped in my eyes. A bird poop took out your eyeball? No, no, the hook was new, you know. <laughs> so when the hook is new, these things happen, you better watch out. <laughs> so, uh, I've seen you do a lot of, uh, uh, you know, high-speed uh, biking, uh, jumping from planes, you know. Uh, there's so much of like uh, adrenaline in you. How do you keep yourself um, like, you know, calm when you want to, like what's... what's that control, what's that switch? Oh, uh, adrenaline is a lo wrong word for me because, uh, for example, if I'm riding or driving, the faster it gets, the calmer and cooler I become. Wow, okay <laughs> uh, Because for me, it's a question of attention. In all these years of driving, I started uh, riding when I was twelve, in all these years, I've never gone and hit something yet. I'm being fair, okay. yet, because I've been hit from behind, I've been hit from side, this and that has happened, but I've never gone and hit something. Well, when I was riding with a Kaveri calling some Bangalore actors, you know, the Kannada film actors, they were all riding with me and they said, Sadhguru, when you're... Uh, what is the one rule that you follow when you're riding? I said, there is only one rule for me. I'm not thinking of anything, traffic rule, this, that. There's only one rule, never collide with anything. This goes for your life also. Never get into collision course with anything because generally it ends there, you know <laughs> So when we were talking about being late, I was telling Siddhant, see, everywhere else in your life you must be on time. One place I encourage you to be late to is your own funeral. You must be late <laughs> Rest of the time if you practice being on time, then you will see you can afford to be late. That's true <laughs> At that one event you must be late. So, uh, I don't get adrenaline like that, I become very calm because See, if you run on adrenaline, what it means is, you're still in the basic instinctive state of flight and fight response. There is something called fight or flight response. The here, adrenaline pumps up and the whole system goes crazy. There is another way. Well, uh, these kids will like it. Uh, Bangalore, hmm? Bangalore, I'm sorry. <laughs> so, uh, you know, like uh, now uh, there's a lot of scientists, some top scientists from the Harvard Medical School have been along with the Rutgers University, Florida University, Indiana University, they've been studying the inner engineering practices, what it does in the last four years. What they found, one of the things I'll tell you, it's an elaborate study, this is the most unbiased gene expression study that's happened in the world till now about these aspects, what they found was that with just about forty days to six weeks of practice, most people are generating over seventy percent higher uh, uh, endocannabinoids within themselves. And it lasts. Up to two years they've been studied 
and for two years they are generating endocannabinoid. That means they're all stoned all the time, just like me. <laughs> now, uh, right now you think you have to go in search of a plant and lot of people are making the plant sacred and this and that. Uh, you must listen to what uh, this Israeli scientist who researched, for, you know, very profoundly about this said, he found an endocannabinoid which… which makes your whole experience of life, every cell in the body, uh, literally orgasmic. Because the amount of endocannabinoids that are being produced by simply doing a simple twenty-one minute practice is higher than what happens in a sexual orgasm. So if you sit here, you're blown away all the time. So this is well established, we always know this, but you know it has to come from the West, it has to come from Harvard, so you got it, you must look up these reports. We will be publishing this in a big way in the coming year because we are move… we are starting a global movement called Conscious Planet where mental health is one of the biggest issues. This can be addressed from within, if you generate in… enough endocannabinoids, you will naturally not be depressed, you will naturally not be anxious, you will be fine. So this Israeli scientist said this, who gave this na name to one of the uh, important endocannabinoids is Anandamide. He said, entire body has cannabis receptors. This is not here for you to go looking for a plant. This is here because your system is capable of generating this. This is the most complex chemistry on the planet. If you manage it well, you will create the chemistry that you want. If you are a good manager of this chemical factory, you will be blissed out. If you are a lousy manager, you will be anxious. I know a lot of people will get at me now, he doesn't know what is anxiety, he doesn't know what is depression. Yes, I don't know, I'm telling you very proudly, I do not know. It's my wish and my blessing, none of you should ever know what it is. Wow <laughs> So that… So, uh, question is, how do you deal with uh, breakups? You are talking of hookup, now you are talking breakup. Sir, yehi problem hai. <laughs> this is… this is what… No, <laughs> this is what I said, when you have a hook for a hand, you will pull out your eyeball one way or the… one day or the other. So, you, if you are living a hookup life, breakup is natural. Hello? How else? Because you must understand, to build a profound relationship with somebody, you have to… you have to drop something of yourself. Otherwise, it's not going to happen, never going to happen. When I say a profound relationship, it… Uh, see, you don't understand it's… it's just between two sexual partners or husband and wife, not like this. To build profound relationships, it takes a certain amount of transparency of who you are, that people can trust you, people can rely upon you, Above all, they have to see that you are something worthwhile. They have to see that you are worthwhile for them to invest their lives in you, otherwise who the hell will do that? If you don't do this, then hookup, breakup nonsense going on. It all looks… see, right now your intelligence is hijacked by your hormones, so you're talking one language. But after some time, or why, let's go back, why go forward? Let's go back. When you were four, five years of age, if your parents were in hookup mode, would you like it? Hello? You really enjoyed a stable family, right? If they were hookup, breakup, would you like it? No. Once again it'll happen once you cross… you're under twenty-five, if you cross forty, once again you will see that you enjoy profound relationships, not hookups and breakups. So we should wait till forty? No, I didn't say that. Uh, I'm saying, it is up to you when you're mature. When you become a mature approach to life, is up to you. Will you do it at the earliest so that you live a beautiful life? Or will you do it on your deathbed? That's your choice. 
So how Individual does, choice. How does one know uh, their worth? Like sometimes when you're in love, uh, you go out of the way, you do things for somebody uh, and you're giving a hundred percent. But that person takes you for granted uh, and you know that that feeling of uh, not being you know uh, valued in a relationship uh, and so should you continue that should you uh, you know give up on that how do you know your worth like how how do you fix that see, see you're misunderstanding a transaction for a love affair a transaction is how much i have given you how much have you given me every day i am measuring i gave you 10 rupees have you given me 10 rupees worth of stuff or no this is a marketplace. If your mind is a marketplace, you will always think in terms of how much have I done, how much will he do, endlessly go on. In Karnataka there is a saying, I hope all of you still know some Kannada. Here it is said, Hena Vidru Egil Kodal Vante That means, you know in India we have this when somebody dies, it's a honor to carry, four people will carry the dead man. But even in that there will be one guy who will simply walk like this without carrying the weight. These people will not know life, they think they are in profit, but they will never know life. You may make… you may take some advantage out of each other, but you will never know the beauty and the sweetness of life. If you don't give yourself absolutely, not not being bothered about what the other person does. Because, see right now, you are loving somebody. They're not here, but still it's beautiful for you. That person is not loving you. That beauty is not there in their hearts and minds, yes or no? So I want you to understand, the beauty of a love affair is you are in love. Whether they are or not is their problem. If you are in love, it's fantastic for you. Ek tarfa pyaar. Huh? What is that? One-sided love. <laughs> no, you can call it whatever. Essentially, human experience happens within you, yes or no? Yes, sir. It happens within you. So you have your emotions. Emotion is a very important part of your existence. Because of this silly school education that you're getting, you think emotion is not important. But even today, most of your life is decided by the intensity of your emotion. You may think you're very intellectual, but still your anger or your love or your anxiety or whatever nonsensical emotion you have is much more intense, stronger and more decisive than your thought process for most people. Well, uh, people get elected into office because of other people's emotion, yes? Yes, sir. So, emotion is a a very juicy part of your life and that is one thing that you can rev up to high intensity. To rev up this body to a very high intensity takes lot of work, lot of work. If you want to rev up your energies, it takes a lot of work. If you want to rev up your intelligence or your intellect to a very high intensity, it takes lot of sharpening and work. But emotion is something that most people are capable of revving it up to high pitch. Only thing is, they may be revving it up in the wrong direction, in an unpleasant way. Their emotions are unpleasant, that's their problem. Keeping your emotion pleasant, see, people who are in love, people who are devotees of something, they have the best experience of life because their emotions are sweet. Doesn't matter who's doing what, your emotions are sweet, your experience of life is beautiful. Once your life of experience is beautiful, all the other concerns are just play, all right? You can play. So, you being in love is important. Somebody is in love or not, I am loving so much, are they loving me that much or this much? If you think like this, you have made your entire life transactional. In transactions, you will gain once and lose another time, endlessly trouble and above all, in this calculation, you make your life very ugly. To be with people without any sense of what will I get, you do not know the joy of it. It's tremendously accelerating because when you don't care what you get, life becomes very easy and you're free. You're, in, you're not enslaved to the transaction. So there is no breakup in your life. People may go in different ways, but there is no breakup. 
People ask me, Sadhguru, have you ever been heartbroken? No, I consciously cut it into millions of pieces and threw it around the world. So, because I don't have one, I can't break it. Sir, <laughs> so, uh, in this uh, day and age of social media where, uh, you know, uh, you know, couples are putting up pictures of how cute they are, you know, uh, people are, you know, kind of uh, putting their uh, avatars, you know, on… with filters on, uh, seeking validation for each and everything. So, how do you know what's real and what's not, where uh, people are hooked onto their uh, phones all the time? And um, how do you differentiate, how do you trust uh, anymore, anything which you see? Uh, well, uh, your confusions will multiply in the coming five years because technology is getting to a yeah, place exactly. between real and the virtual you can't make out. Yeah. So, uh <laughs> see, people are talking about virtual reality, all right? I want you to understand, right now what you're seeing here is also virtual reality. You are not seeing it the way it is. You are seeing it the way it's projected in your mind. So whether it happens through a machine or through your own, you know, visual mechanism, what you're seeing is virtual reality, even now. Okay. So this is what this whole culture, this whole nation has… is… has been so invested in searching for truth, means just this, they want to see everything the way it is. They want to see everything the way it is and this is the whole effort. Search for truth means this. What is there to search for truth? Everything is right here. But you are seeing it as it is necessary for your survival. You are not seeing it as it is. If you ask a gross grasshopper, he has a completely different view of everything. Hello? Completely different view because his visual mechanism is totally different. So, if you don't see things the way they are, then you will never get to lo do life with ease, with joy, because always there is concern. When you're not seeing properly, every step is a challenge, isn't it so? Suppose you cannot see properly, is every step a challenge? Every step in life to be a challenge. Today, this has become the mode particularly in the West and of course the Bengaluru boys and girls are picking it up. That is, if you're a toddler, you have a diaper problem. You become a adolescent, you have hormonal problem. You middle age, it's a crisis. Old age is horrible. What is good then? Death is the only good thing. This is what is happening to the world because we are looking at it in a very transactional way and we do not know what is real, what is not. If you will love me, hello sir, because you are the superstar, they've all come. <laughs> if you allow me a little more, this is simple. See, none of you, whatever form you have right now, none of you were born like this, am I right? Hello? You were not born in this shape and size. Slowly it happened. How did it happen? Not ragi mudde, I think more pizza than ragi mudde these days. Wrong thing to eat, this is the year of the millet, you know <laughs> So, uh, whatever you ate, slowly accumulated. You know what's ragi mudde? Ragi I know, sir. Okay <laughs> <laughs> I make sure he eats one ragi mudde and goes, huh, before he goes <laughs> So, uh, this is an accumulation. What is an accumulation? Anything that's an accumulation, you can claim it is mine right now. But if you say it's me, little crazy, isn't it? Right now I'm using this microphone, I say this is my microphone, all right? But because I'm speaking through this, after some time if I start believing this is me, Crazy or no? Anything that you gather can be yours, can never ever be you, yes or no? 
your hat, your cap, your phone, your clothes, is it you or yours? Yours. It's yours, it's not you. Now I'm asking about your body, is it yours or is it you? Hello? It's yours. What about the mind? This is also an accumulation, isn't it? When you were born, you didn't have this, slowly you accumulated impressions. This is an accumulation of food, this is an accumulation of impressions. But after some time, you gotten so entangled in these two, called physiological and psychological processes, you, now you do not know what the hell you are. Once you get lost in this physiological and psychological mess, however pretty your body is, however sharp you think your mind is, once you're lost into something that you're not, you cannot see life the way it is, nor can you experience it the way it is. At every point in your life you think, this is it, two years later you look back and see, that was stupid, now this is it. Hello? Has this not already happened by your twenty… by the time you're twenty-five? Hello? Happened or no? When you're five years of age, you thought that bicycle that you wanted was everything. If I got that one bicycle, life is settled. How many things have happened since then? Every point you're thinking this is it and realizing that is not it. So do you want to spend your life like this? And you sit on the de deathbed and realize this is not it, that's late. Hello? That's really being late. So investing some amount of time to turn inward, to just figure what is the nature of my life. This is not… don't think this is, oh, he's teaching us something spiritual, this is fundamental. See, you bought your phone. Should you read the user's manual in the first three days or after three years when you're discarding it? When should you read it? As soon as you get it, you must read it at the earliest possible time if you want to use this phone to its fullest. The same goes for this. If you do not realize the fundamentals of what this is earliest in your life, then you will see at every stage in your life you will say, this is not it. People think if they have a job, if they have a steady salary and maybe a, a partner or children or home or car, they think they are having a wonderful life. But just look at their faces, they are driving their dream car and they are stuck in the traffic. Are they laughing in joy? Are they exuding bliss that in my dream car I am sitting and the traffic is giving me more time to sit in my dream car? They are just abusing themselves and everybody else and the Creator. Hello? So I am saying their idea of wonderful life exists only because somebody else doesn't have those things. If you are enjoying things that other people don't have, I don't call this joy, I call that sickness. Hello? You enjoy what others don't have, sickness or no? This happened just before I started off on the Safe Soil movement. I was in United States revving up the media and stuff. So there was one young man, just over twenty-five, twenty-four, twenty-five I think he's. He's behaving like his tail is on fire. I said, hey, what's happening to you? What are you doing here? He said, Sadhguru, I want to make one billion dollars, one billion dollars. I said, that's all. You come tomorrow morning, I'll give you a billion dollars. Really, Sadhguru, you'll give me one billion? I said, yeah. He had eight friends with him. I said, see these eight guys who have not said a word, they were just sitting there. These eight of your friends, I'm going to give them ten billion each. But why, Sadhguru, ten billion for them, only one billion for me? Are idiot, you just now you said you want only one billion. That is your life's ambition. Now because they're getting ten, you're getting miserable. This is the way of transactions. I mean, I can go on and on. Uh, <laughs> there's so many questions, I mean, and I'm sure you guys also have a lot of questions. So, uh, let's open up to uh, the audience if you guys have any. But we need a mic there. 
overthinking i heard overthinking somewhere overthinking uh, there is no such thing as overthinking over speeding nothing like that this is in the language of the policemen and parents <laughs> you should think as much as you can what's the problem only problem is your mind is getting hot mind is getting hot not because of overthinking because there is too much friction there no lubrication no proper engineering it's not properly aligned now that you're talking about overthinking i must tell you last week i rode from coimbatore to bangalore on my motorcycle oh, i came away ahead of the security and stuff because uh, you know security travels at a certain speed so i got here from coimbatore to bangalore in just over 4 hours but your bangalore city everybody is such a bad driver we need to do some driving training up <laughs> because it took me two and a half hours from electronic city to devanhalli and uh, my engine overheating that motorcycle is not made for that kind of first gear riding overheating and seizing 30 times my engine seized from there to here why i am saying this is if you are well aligned if you are well aligned and well lubricated this can think at any speed that you want i must tell you this this may be a little hard and some of course the troll army will get at me let them do it because they also need some profession they don't have any obviously uh, is this at any given time on an average i have 12 to 14 channels going in my head all the time i don't find it burdensome because i wear it little loose i am not stuck in it your body your physiological process and psychological process either you can make it into stepping stones for you or you can make it into quicksand where you sink in and die right now most human beings uh i don't want to say percentages because it will be insulting most human beings are suffering their own physiological processes and their psychological processes their own intelligence is hurting them a lot you call this stress you call this anxiety you call it whatever essentially your intelligence is turned against you yes or no if your intelligence is working for you will you make it beautiful or horrible for yourself you must tell me only three people <laughs> please commit yourself to that that you will use your intelligence for your well being and everybody's well being the moment you know how to torture yourself with your own mind only advantage is you may get employment in hell because you will be good at torturing others also you may be very good at it because if you can poke yourself endlessly and suffer you can also do it to others very easily isn't it this is one thing you must do before your before you cross 25 i am saying this not just because you are under 25 because for me things happened when i was 25 my realization happened when i was 25 after that i have never had a single concern about what about me because that concern is gone no matter what this is how i am so what is the concern you must settle this that your mind will never be an impediment in your life or you will not be an impediment in your own life ah there are many challenges outside but if you yourself are a problem in your life you can be a problem in somebody else's life but you can't be a problem in your own life that is dumb stupid isn't it hello so this is simple way to test is if you come we'll provide right kind of atmosphere but you can do it at home also 3 days no phone no television no book no looking out the window just simply no sleeping sit alert night you can sleep day time you sit please sit alert just see what your mind does to you you will not need any psychiatric diagnosis you will know who you are you must do this if you sit here you're joyful by your own nature now if you hook up you will be joyful 
if you break up, you will be joyful. All right. <laughs> but if you are not joyful, why you are hooking up is you want to squeeze joy out of somebody. That is a miserable job. That is a miserable job. You are joyful because human experience is generated from within. Yes or no? Human experience is generated from within. And if you make sure your mind never troubles you, there are simple tools for this. For under twenty-five we can offer it in a certain way, but you must come in a committed way. People are asking me, Sadhguru, it costs money. It doesn't cost money, at one time we thought it free. Then they're behaving like in a bad movie. They go and whenever they feel like it, they go out and smoke and they come back whenever they do. Well, you must understand, nothing significant in your life will ever happen to you with a, without the needed attention. Do you agree with me? Hello? Without intense attention, anything significant in your life will not happen. You will live a very innocuous life without any profoundness to it, without anything, because whatever you do, it must impact. Action should impact, isn't it? Do you want to, let's say, write a book that nobody wants to read? You must say yes or no. No, sir. Do you want to make a movie that nobody wants to see? We are doing that, <laughs> but not <laughs> <Okay>. anymore <laughs> hey, This is not a confession, it's okay <laughs> <laughs> Come on, act, man. <laughs> Do you want to cook something nobody wants to eat? Do you want to post something that nobody wants to see? No. Because the purpose of action is, how impactful is it? The purpose of our existence is, how pleasant and how significant it is. Your experience of life should be profound and significant then naturally your actions will be impactful. Without investing on your experience, if you try to impact, it gets flaky. Three days you are able to do that, after that you are gone. So it's very, very important that you invest upon this one a sufficient amount of time, so that if you sit here, nobody is here, you sit here, it is profound and pleasant, your experience of yourself. Once this happens, Keeping people away will be a problem. Having people around you will not be a problem. Oh, we have questions. Yes? Hello? Uh, hello Sadhguru, uh, I'm Srijan. I have a question for you. What do you want to say about people who are stuck between uh, relationship and friendship? What is that? <laughs> friends or I, I didn't get that. What is that? What, what is that? Friend zone. Huh? Friend zone, sir. Stuck between relationship and friendship. Friendship is a relationship, isn't it? Kushro. <laughs> See, this is why. Now, you're doing ha-hu because in your mind somewhere, relationship means body should rub each other. Give that up, huh? Relationship means you can hold a wonderful relationship with anything, not just human beings, with anything. If you have a dog, you can have a beautiful relationship. With a tree, you can have a beautiful relationship. With the very space that you live in, you can have a beautiful relationship. Actually, you have many, most of the time. But now you're reducing that word to a simplistic, hormone-based contact. Uh, that is a small aspect of your life. When you're under twenty-five, it looks like it's the biggest. But it is not so big. It is important, it is a part of our life. But we don't have… see, anything, if you exaggerate, either because you eulogize it or you demonize it, both ways it gets exaggerated. If you exaggerate something, then you are impaired. Like right now, let's say I came here, maybe this stage is six feet high, but I look down and I think it's hundred feet. Now, even if the stage catches fire, I won't jump because I think it's hundred feet. It's extremely important to see everything just the way it is. Only then you can address life for what it is. Otherwise, you're addressing a psychological reality which doesn't exist, something that you made up. 
something that you made up, you're trying to address that. What you have made up need not be addressed. What you have made up for fun, you can wind it down whenever you want. But if… if there is no friendship, there is no relationship. And how can you say, I am your friend but we are not in any way connected? Conne relation means connected, right? There was a time in English language when you say relation means them blood relatives. Because at that time people believed, unless you are my brother, you are my sister, my aunt, my something, I cannot be connected with you. Your religion, your caste, your clan will not allow me to have any kind of contact. Only if you are this, your relationship, otherwise I have no relationship. This was the understanding of the past. Now you've gotten into your worst block, your idea of a relationship is you must be horny about somebody, otherwise you don't have a relationship. What is that? That's very basic. Huh? Uh, hi, uh, thank you for your time, both of you. I think it's been a great session. Uh, I have one question, uh, Mr. Sadhguru. What's your take on uh, same-sex relationships, same-gender relationships? See, once again you're going to the same thing. You misunderstand relationship as body-based. Relationship can be emotional, can be intellectual, can be in many different ways. Just thinking that relationship means you must do something with somebody else's body is a very basic thing. Drop that and grow beyond that. You will become over twenty-five shortly, yeah? Hi Sadhguru, uh, I have a question for you. Yeah, this is Gokul. Uh, first thing first, thank you for opening your serenity and peace in Bangalore through Isha Yoga Foundation. Have you visited the place? In Coimbatore, I have visited, not in Bangalore. Yeah, in Bangalore, uh, you must go, all of you youth should work to make this happen. Why we are doing this is, see I am not… essentially I am not a real estate person, I avoid building. But we have to build now because my real estate is in the minds and hearts of people around the world. I don't believe in building things like that. But at the same time, what we are seeing is, today many scientists, neurologists talking about this, psychiatrists are speaking from the stat statistics that they have, World Health Organization is talking about it, that there will be a mental health pandemic. How many of you… You okay or you all agree? That means what? You're already there. Anyway, it doesn't matter. What I am saying is, what a pandemic means is, three years ago nobody knew the meaning of this word, but today we understand pandemic means among these few hundred people, if twenty-five people have some problem, by the time we leave this place, all of us will get it. That's a pandemic. Now mental health pandemic means, that means just about everybody will get it. Uh, the recent stats uh, that has been, uh, you know, uh, uh, published by the CDC uh, in United States, which is the authority on these aspects, they are saying, among the teenage girls, w one in every three is depressed. See, a teenage girl means, when we were growing up, they were simply bubbly and giggly for nothing. They don't need any reason, simply kiki kiki they'll be. But now they're depressed. This is not good. That is an age when, you know, life is at its highest level of exuberance. This is not an age for depression. Later on, due to many things, some people may unfortunately fall into that, but now teenage girls, one in three, hello? One in three is a disaster, isn't it? It is not an ailment, it's a large-scale disaster already. So this will increase. It is expected by 2032, it is possible that nearly over forty percent of the world's population could be on psychiatric medication. It is expected. Hope we don't go there. It's somebody's plan or projection, I don't know. 
All I am saying is, so as a part of this in 2024, we are launching a movement called Conscious Planet because the only thing that's missing in a human being is this. A few things I will say, if you agree with me, you say yes, if you say… if you dis disagree with me, you say no. You're free to say whatever. Do you agree with me, no matter what kind of a dumb idiot you are, still you are the most intelligent creature upon this planet? Do you agree with me as a human being, you are the peak of evolution on this planet? Yeah. Are you looking at somebody next to you and thinking, no <laughs> Do you agree with me, you are the flower of evolution really on this planet, this is the height? Yeah. But human beings are right now in a state where they don't know how to handle their own intelligence. The reason why this is happening, there are many reasons. One important thing is, our education systems are busy teaching us how to take charge of something. But if you have not taken charge of this, everything is dangerous, isn't it? If you drive a car, it's dangerous if you're not in charge. If you drive technology, it is dangerous. Science is dangerous. Most dangerous things are happening out of best things in the world. The highest, the peak or the cutting edge of science and technology are becoming bombs and missiles and nuclear weapons and stuff. Why? Simply because we have not taken charge of this one, how to keep this one. I'm asking you a simple question. If you are feeling very happy, you're blissed out right now. Do you feel like punching somebody in the face? Really? When you're very happy? What? That is drunken happiness. If you are sane and you are happy, do you feel like doing harm to somebody? Only when you are miserable, you want to share it. When you are feeling frustrated, miserable, angry, you want to do something horrible to someone. But when you are feeling very pleasant, you will not want to do any harm to anybody. This is a fundamental thing. Like I was telling you about these scientific studies that are being done, this is very simple. If you are willing to invest a little bit of time for your own well-being, you can make sure that you will never become mentally ill. This commitment you must take in your life because you have this responsibility for yourself and everyone else who cares for you and everyone else that you care for. Yes? Don't you have this responsibility? Above all to yourself that you make sure you are not the issue in this world or you are not the issue, particularly in your life. Right now, human inability to handle their own intelligence is the problem. People are going about talking, you know, sp the spread of all use of alcohol, drugs, everything spreading because people are just trying to be peaceful and blissful, that's all. I am not looking at it in a moralistic way, I am looking at it as a very low tech, no good way because you going and bowing down to a plant because you want to get little pleasure out of it is basic. When you have such a complex chemical factory here, which can do anything that you want, which can cook up what you want. So, it is possible to do this, otherwise the only option will be somehow to slice a part of your brain out. If we take away part of your brain, everybody will be peaceful. Hello? So essentially, intelligence has become the problem. I want you to clear answer. Is intelligence a solution for everything or is it a problem? It must be a solution. Human intelligence should be a solution for everything, isn't it? But right now we are… if you say, I'm stressed, you are making your intelligence into a problem. If you say, I'm anxious, you are making your intelligence into a problem, whatever else that causes unpleasantness within you means you are making your intelligence into a problem. You must make this into a solution for yourself and the world around you. This is where your ability to live is gets enhanced. This is where you being human means something, that you are a solution, you are not a problem. Thank you very much. I am telling Siddhan that he must do a two-minute jig. What do you think?
शेर की जुबानी सुनिए शेर की कहानी यहाँ रैप नहीं होता तेरे वैम को भगा दे लड़कियां न गाड़ी अपनी अलग ही आवाज असल रैप का ये ज्वाला तेरे हाथों में जगा दे क्योंकि तुझे छेड़ने की तू नकली वाला मर्दानगी पे आ जितने तुझमे गर्मी उससे ज्यादा गर्म मेरा कलम क्यों इतना बेशरम का काम का वो काम जिसमे तेरा कल नहीं क्या काम का वो आज जिसमे तू सफल नहीं पल नहीं दिमाग की जरूरत तेरे भाई की हुकूमत सच्चाई की ये सूरत भाग 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 आयश भाग 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 सच्चाई की ये लहर हर मोहल्ले में कैर मेक सम नॉइस सिक मैन मेक सम नॉइस फॉर माय ब्रदर थैंक यू सिक थैंक यू थैंक यू सो मच गाइस थैंक यू फॉर ऑल द लव